Hey bros, Pride here. Today, I'm going to teach you how to pan crop. Here's an example from my latest video of some of the types of pan crops you can do with Sony Vegas. As you can tell by that example, we will primarily be focused on intense, shaky movements. This style is mainly used for faster, more action-packed videos. Here's another example with a different kind of footage. Before we start, we need to understand why we use pan crops in order to use them effectively. We'll be using them to add life to some gameplay footage. They will put an emphasis on any sort of impact to allow you to really feel the power behind the action. It keeps you engaged and adds an extra element to the scene. Let's begin by looking at the most common types of pan crops I use in my videos. First, we have the basic vertical pan crop. The screen simply goes up and down. Second, we have the horizontal pan crop. Pretty self-explanatory. Third, we have our rotating pan crop. For this, we just rotate the footage back and forth, almost like a seesaw. And finally, we have our random pan crop. This combines elements from the previous three examples and has much more movement. There are all sorts of other pan crops you can do, especially with transitions, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll only be focusing on those four. Now, you may be wondering, are we really gonna do this in basic Sony Vegas when better alternatives and plugins exist? Damn right we are. The reason I prefer to do it in Vegas is because it is raw, it's done by hand, it has its flaws and it's not perfect, but that's exactly what makes it so good. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. So I have my footage in context. The first thing I'll be doing is making sure it's properly synced. Syncing is the foundation of every sort of montage edit. So I've already gone ahead and done that here. I kept the syncing quite basic with minimal cuts, so it'll be pretty easy to work with. Let's get to work. To begin adding pan crops, click the event pan crop button. This will bring up the pan crop screen. You can set it up however you wish. I always prefer to have mine on the right or left side of the video preview. First thing I'll recommend is to right click on the first keyframe and change it to smooth. This is the setting I use I'd say roughly 60 to 80% of the time and it is extremely versatile. Changing this setting makes it so that your pan crops ease in and out. The reason why we do this from the start is because every keyframe after the initial one copies the state of the one before. If you set it to smooth, any keyframes you add after will be the same. Take a look. All right, so let's create a plan. My first keyframe will be right on the beat or slightly before it. I generally give two to four frames between the point of impact, so we'll place those here by double clicking to create a keyframe. I don't really worry too much about the sync. I just make sure the first keyframe starts right on the beat or slightly before it by a frame or two. So we have our two beginner keyframes. Now we place the ending keyframe. I normally put this one right before the next big pan crop. So in this case, it'll be right before the next shot. The groundwork has been laid out, so now we choose how much we want to zoom in and what style of pan crop we're going for. For this clip, I'll show you the basic rotating pan crop we spoke about earlier. In this window, hover your mouse over the edge or corner and click and hold to drag it to a spot you're comfortable with. With this step alone, you've already created a basic smooth pan crop that you can use. To take it further, we're going to add our rotation. Place your mouse anywhere around the edge of the clip until it changes to this symbol. The arrow should be in the shape of a circle. Click and hold and drag your mouse in the direction of your choice to create some rotation. Perfect. Now we're gonna add some more keyframes. My general rule is to keep the frames between the start of the impact short and have them expand until the pan crops reach their end. By the end, it should look something like this. All right, so you're gonna do the same thing with the next keyframe as you did with the other. The only difference is that you don't have to adjust the zoom as it's already done for you if you've placed the ending keyframe. All you have to do is add the rotation. So we're gonna bring it back the opposite way to a point we're comfortable with. This will do. I'm gonna repeat this process, gradually decreasing the amount of rotation I add until we reach our ending frame. You want the impact to be heavy and eventually ease out, so make sure your rotations aren't that heavy as you get towards the last keyframe. And we're done. Let's take a look at what this looks like. For the next clip, we're gonna do a vertical pan crop. We'll start the same way, planning it out with our two opening keyframes and our ending frame. 
We'll zoom in again to a point we're comfortable at. And this time, instead of rotating the clip, we'll put our mouse anywhere inside the area until the four arrows appear. If you click and hold, this allows you to move the clip in any direction. But we want to be precise, so while we have the four arrows in context, we'll be double clicking to reset the clip to its original position. This also works with rotation. If you're rotating a clip, you can double click and it'll go back to normal. So what I want you guys to do is go over to the left and keep clicking on this icon until only the vertical arrows appear. This means that you can only move the video up or down. It doesn't matter where you move the mouse, it's permanently locked vertically. If you need to get back to moving the footage freely, you can keep clicking until you see the four arrows appear again. But for now, please have the vertical arrow selected. All you're going to do is click and hold anywhere in the video and move your clip up or down as much as possible without black bars showing up in the video preview. For your next keyframe, you're going to do the same thing in the opposite direction. As the keyframes go on, gradually decrease the amount the pan crop moves as we've done before. And that's it. It's surprisingly easy once you understand the basic rules, so let's take a look at what we've created. Now there are two pan crops I didn't fully cover, so let's talk about them for a bit. The horizontal pan crop is basically the same as the vertical one, just move the footage from side to side. I'm not gonna show you that as I have a good feeling you're an expert by now, so we'll move on to the random pan crop. For this one, you combine all of the things I've told you before and mix it up in your own way. You can move the clip diagonally, add more rotation to certain frames, rotate while it's moving vertically, etc. This is something I'd like for you to try and experiment with on your own as it is highly dependent on the footage you're using. Certain random variations look much better on different things. The rotating and vertical pan crops I've already shown you should cover the majority of your pan crop needs and the rest is up to your creativity. Experiment, try new things and have fun with it. I'm not going to show you all of my secrets, but now you should know the basics to creating some hard hitting pan crops with Sony Vegas. If you'd like a more advanced tutorial on this topic, or any other topic, please let me know in the comments section. I'd be happy to help. Like the video if you enjoyed, and of course, take care, my friends.